Getting people from A to B is not an easy task. In Victoria, trains have been doing part of that task for 157 years. Hang on, I think this is the wrong intro. This is West Coast Railways, transporting Warrnambool. In late 1992, the newly elected Kennett government outlined its plans to cut back Victorian regional rail services. Initially, all services except those to Geelong, Ballarat via Geelong, Bendigo, Albury and Tarragon were going to be cut and replaced by coaches. This would include V-Line's thrice daily service from Melbourne to Warrnambool. However, in order to do this, the government created various franchises and offered them to the private sector. In most cases, rail services were replaced with coaches. However, in the case of the Warrnambool line, private company West Coast Railways, officially the Victorian Railway Company Proprietary Limited, won the franchise but nominated to continue to operate a rail service. The company was led by Donald Gibson and Gary MacDonald, and began operation on the line on the 19th of September 1993. Initially, they were forced to lease locomotives and rolling stock from V-Line, as they did not have any of their own. However, they began acquiring their own rolling stock shortly after, as we'll take a look at now. West Coast Railway owned a number of different classes of locomotives. Prior to taking over the line, services were provided by V-Line's N and A-class locomotives, primarily hauling N-type carriages. This meant that most services were operated by rolling stock built or refurbished around 10 years earlier. However, around this time, the Public Transport Corporation was retiring a number of older locomotives from the 1960s. West Coast took advantage of this and purchased a number of B, S and T-class locomotives. Prior to entering service, West Coast thoroughly rebuilt and refurbished East Locomotive. This meant that West Coast did not start running services with its own locomotives until 1995. The first locomotives to enter service were S-Class locomotives S300, S302 and S311, as well as sole B-Class locomotive B61. These all entered service throughout the first half of 1995. This meant that West Coast now had enough locomotives to run its own services, however it would not stop there. In May 1997, Locomotive B76 re-entered service after around half a decade out of service. West Coast also reactivated Locomotive T363 in 1995, though not for its passenger operations, as well as T369 in 1999. 2000 saw T385 acquired and reintroduced to service. Finally, Locomotive B65 and B80 were both reintroduced to service in 2002. B65 was used primarily for freight and transfers. However, B80 was restored for the experimental Murraylander service, a commuter train from Talambent to Adelaide that West Coast intended to introduce, however, this failed to occur. I'll talk more about the Murraylander later on. Nonetheless, as of the end of West Coast operations, their locomotive fleet consisted of B61, operational for passenger trains since 1995, B64, stored at Ballarat East for spare parts, B65, operational for transfer trains and leasing to freight companies since 2002, B75, stored at Ballarat East for spare parts. B76, operational for passenger trains since May 1997. B80, operational for leasing to freight companies since its brief Murraylander stint in 2002. S300, S302 and S311, all operational for passenger trains since 1995. S312, stored at Ballarat East for long-term reactivation. T363, operational for transfer trains and leasing to freight companies since 1995. T369, operational for transfer trains and leasing to freight companies since around 1999. And finally, T385, operational for transfer trains and leasing to freight companies since 2000. West Coast typically ran its passenger services with a single B or S class locomotive, but occasionally second or even third locomotives would be used to assist, including its fleet of non-passenger locomotives. It regularly operated transfers from Ballarat East workshops to Geelong and Melbourne, which would often be operated by its T-Class locomotives, while it leased its T-Class locomotives to freight companies for use on their freight trains. Finally, it would often use its locomotives for various charter trains it operated. And no, I haven't forgotten about the steam locos, I'll just talk about them later. As well as locomotives, West Coast also owned a number of passenger cars of the S and Z types. These cars were being retired by V-Line around the time West Coast was formed as a result of the introduction of the Sprinter Rail cars. With these cars still being somewhat usable, West Coast decided to purchase many of them to run its services. Four types of passenger cars were purchased by West Coast. 
The ACZ First Class Saloon Cars with Conductor's Station and a Luggage Area. The BZ Economy Class Saloon Cars. BRS Economy Class Compartment Cars with Food Facilities. And BS Economy Class Compartment Cars. These cars were all purchased throughout 1994 and 1995. Initially, West Coast simply replaced the V-Line logo on the side of the carriages with the modified West Coast logo to fit the V-Line white and green stripe. However, West Coast later refurbished its carriages and painted them in its blue, white and yellow corporate livery. This refurbishment included new interior carpets, seat covers and curtains pneumatically operated indoors, as well as a DDA accessible toilet. This was progressively done to West Coast's entire regular passenger fleet. Typically, West Coast passenger services would have at least one ACZ car to provide first class and luggage facilities and one BRS car to provide food facilities. Then there would be a mix of additional B, S, B, Z and sometimes BRS cars to provide additional economy class seating capacity. Regular services had between 3 and 5 carriages, but on special occasions there could be even more. These weren't the only passenger carriages West Coast owned either. West Coast had a number of special cars, including several ex-South Australian Railways K cars, previously used by V-Line, and several ex-Overland and Southern Aurora carriages. West Coast also owned a number of power vans and guards vans. This included four ex-Victorian Railways CP guards van, one ex-Australian National PCO power van, and several D power vans. There would usually be at least one of these used on each service. So all in all, a typical West Coast passenger service would have a single locomotive hauling between three and five passenger carriages with a single power van or guards van at the rear. And finally, West Coast Freight. When West Coast began its operations, it realised very soon that the rail market would primarily be privatised, both for freight and passenger services. In the end, it was only a very brief period between 1999 and 2004 when all rail operations in Victoria were privatised, but even now there is still only one publicly run operator. Nonetheless, this led West Coast to purchase two V-Line T-Class locomotives around 1995, for use both on transfer trains but also with an eye to eventually being leased to freight companies. A third one joined in 2000, by which time private freight was becoming a real thing, with companies like Australian National and V-Line Freight having been privatised, and finally locomotive B65 joined in 2002. That left West Coast with four locomotives for use with freight companies. West Coast also owned several freight wagons, such as a couple of VLX Louver vans, but there's simply too little information to accurately cover them in this video. Nevertheless, West Coast freight somewhat lives on, with all of West Coast's former operational locomotives now being used in some sort of freight hauling activity. A little diversion off topic here to an interesting proposal for rail in South Australia. Since the cessation of passenger services to Mount Gambier, Wyala and Broken Hill in 1990, South Australia has not had any regional passenger services. With Australian National, Getting there is half the fun. However, there was a proposal in the mid-1990s for rail service to Adelaide to Tail and Bend. I'm not quite sure who exactly was behind this proposal, but nevertheless, West Coast refurbished locomotive B80 for use on this train. Passenger carriages were a number of ex-New South Wales and Commonwealth Railways cars. After one trial run from Adelaide to Tail and Bend, the train never ran again, with B80 being used for freight working since then. But 20 years on, it looks like there'll be another trial service along that corridor soon. This time the Talgo trial from Adelaide to Mount Barker. Let's see what happens this time. Straight back onto West Coast Railways for something I'm sure many of you have been waiting for. This being steam locomotives. West Coast founders strongly believed in rail, hence why they did not replace their services with coaches as most other operators did. They also wanted to create a unique experience of a steam locomotive hauling a mainline passenger train. They searched around until they found a couple of old, powerful R-Class steam locomotives who were suitable for mainline passenger operation. These being R711 and R766, which were not owned by West Coast, but owned by two groups who were happy to give their locomotives for West Coast to use. Subsequently, West Coast restored R711 to service in 1998. The locomotive returned to active service on the Warrnambool line in 1999. Typically, it would haul the service from Melbourne to Warrnambool in the morning and from Warrnambool to Melbourne on the evening and Saturdays. This gave travellers about five hours in Warrnambool for a day trip. The locomotive was also used for other services, often being chartered to go to places like Albury, while it also made a regular close to monthly trip to Echuca. Subsequently, locomotive R766 was restored in 2002, while 1889 steam locomotive Y112 was restored a year before R711 in 1997. West Coast also had a number of locomotives in storage, including various D3 class and R class locomotives, with these being located at Ballarat East Depot. These were planned for eventual restoration. Ultimately, after the demise of West Coast, R711 and Y112 were given to Steam Rail Victoria, while R766 was returned to the group who owns it and recently returned to active service. West Coast, being a private operator, tried to make profit as much as possible. This led to high fares being put in place. 
As of January 1, 2004, a one-way trip from Melbourne to Warrnambool was priced at $57.40 off-peak for an adult in economy and $86.20 in first class. This is equivalent to $85.03 for economy and $127.20 for first class in 2022 dollars. This compares to current V-Line fares of $39.40 in economy and $48 in first class. Obviously this meant the trips were very expensive, and if you were travelling with multiple people, prohibitively so. Nonetheless, West Coast still managed to have a 20% increase in patronage between 1993 and 2004, compared to the rest of V-Line which remained relatively stable. As for the actual services West Coast provided, there were three trips between Melbourne and Warrnambool daily on weekdays, with some of these services skipping Birragara. There were also three services on Saturdays, an increase of one from when West Coast commenced operations, but there was only one return trip on Sundays. But just as quickly as West Coast Railways rose, it fell. The first major blow was the regional fast rail project in 2004. This required a temporary closure of the line from Melbourne to Geelong in February 2004 to rebuild the line with concrete sleepers and slightly smoother curves to allow for faster speeds. Services resumed in March 2004, but during the period when the line was closed, patronage was much lower. But the final blow was in May. The discovery of stress cracks on the underframes of aging B and S class streamliner locomotives resulted in the suspension of all services on the 21st of May 2004. While one locomotive was repaired and reintroduced to service, allowing for one return service per day to be reintroduced, and West Coast initially intended to repair all locomotives and restore the normal service, in the end, West Coast decided to end operations on the 31st of October 2004. So, when the 608 service from Spencer Street to Warrnambool arrived into Warrnambool to terminate at 9.23pm on the 31st, 1st of October 2004, it marked the end of the West Coast Railway era. The next day, V-Line took over. Since the end of West Coast Railway, there have been various changes. Obviously, the majority of West Coast rolling stock was not used by V-Line. However, several things were. Carriages ACZ 252 and 257 were passed to V-Line, where they were initially used as first-class carriages. In 2006-2007, ACZ252 was converted to BZN252, while ACZ257 was recoded BCZ257 for economy use. BCZ257 remains the only Z-coded car still in use with V-Line, being retained as a BCZ to allow some services to have a second luggage facility. V-Line also acquired BZ267, being briefly used as a BZ before also being converted to a BZN. V-Line also took locomotive S302, being used until the 13th of January 2006. As for other changes, fares have gone down significantly, and there are now three trains per day every day at minimum, and four on weekdays. As for the rest of West Coast rolling stock, both passenger carriages and locomotives were sold to other companies. For the passenger carriages, 707 Operations acquired cars ACZ255, BZ270, BRS224, BS205 and 212, while Steamrail acquired BZ269, BRS229, BS201, 206 and 207. Pacific National acquired BRS221, 222, 223 and 225 for use as crew cars, while Horizon acquired cars BS208 and BS210. As for locomotives, B61 and B65 were sold to CFCLA initially but became SSR Locos. B64 was sold to SSR in a stripped condition and remains in storage despite talks of reactivation. B75 was sold off before West Coast finished operations. B76 and B80 were sold to CFCLA. S300 was sold to CFCLA but is now privately preserved. S302 was given to V-Line, then El Zorro and now SSR. S311 and S312 were sold to CFCLA but eventually became SSR locos. T363 was sold to CFCLA then became an SSR loco. T369 was sold to CFCLA and was became the last loco in West Coast livery. And T385 was sold to CFCLA and then on to SSR. Steam locos R711 and Y112 were given to Steamrail, while R766 was returned to the group that owns it and recently returned to operation in New South Wales. And that's pretty much it for West Coast Railways. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. As for other changes, fares have gone down significantly. Can you mute that please? I'm recording. As for the West, as for the rest of West Coast rolling stock.